The Brihadeshwara Temple is in Tanjavur, which is a little down south from Chennai. Uh, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which means across the world, in all the monuments, it is seen as one of the most important. Uh, there are many, many mysteries around it. Uh, and there are many false stories as well, that the top is 80 tons and, and they built a plank across the village. All of that is not true. But there are some really important secrets on the Brihadeshwara Temple that you need to know. My name is Pradeep. Uh, and I love the Chola period uh, in terms of history. Uh, listen to me as I tell you a little bit more about the Bradeshwara Temple. Uh, the Bradeshwara Temple is a, it stands in an area of 44 acres. And the height of the Bradeshwara Temple is about uh, 217 feet. And it was built by Rajaraja Chola, who ruled in the 11th century in Tanjavur. This temple was built for Shiva and Rajaraja saw it as the most important building that he ever constructed in his life. Today there are a few other temples around it but in those days it was just these two gopurams or entranceways and then the massive temple and a small temple for Chandikeshwara on the side. There are many many important inscriptions in the temple. One of the inscriptions incidentally is on how he got two different trading or merchant communities come together and donate bananas to make appams to the temple Ganesha. Uh, even today, we love our appams in the south. Maybe you had it yourself. Uh, and it's very tasty to make an appam with mashed bananas in it. And from this inscription, we find that throughout his reign, the price of bananas did not change. Uh, another inscription that we have in the temple is about how he gave an entire village and all the income from that village was used to fund uh, wonderful spices and fragrances that was mixed with the water that was used for the daily sacred bath of Shiva. Uh, but in the temple, uh, what we really need to understand is the architectural marvel, uh, marvel of it. This was built at a time when there was no concrete, there were no earth moving equipment, and yet they were able to move these massive chunks of granite which is the, one of the world's hardest and most densest stones from Pudukote, which is about at least, a, a Tuchi in Pudukote is about at least 100 kilometers away from Tanjavur. They were able to move those stones from there, bring it all the way over here and build the temple. The second thing that's remarkable about the temple is there is no binding material used when these stones come together. So unlike today, you use concrete or cement. In those days, they used no binding material. They had a male and female joint, which means one stone would have a protrusion. The other stone would have a hole. They would both match with each other. And using that friction and that support of each other, the entire structure would stand. And what's even more remarkable is the, I told you the main tower is about 215 feet high, right? The entire tower inwards is completely hollow. So they, they had the ability to place blocks of granite stone at a very precise angle so that they went up like this and at the end on the top to prevent the entire structure from collapsing downwards or outwards, they put in about eight stones on the top, the capstone or the kalasa, and that structure holds the entire, uh, entire tower together. Inside the main tower, there are some beautiful 11th century wall murals and from these murals, and there's a little bit of color that's still left over. From these, we actually have an image of how Rajaraja looked. He's a dusky brown color, wearing a very short dhoti, uh, bare bodied on the top. And he has this really luxurious beard and, and mustache. And he has his hair all bunned up on the top, in, in the back. And we have a few of his queens as well. There's another picture of where they are preparing a wedding feast for Sundaramurti Nayanar, who was a very, very important Shaiva saint. And in that, you can see all the vessels and the rice and the vegetables. And on, on, the, on the pandal, uh, you can see a little band of cloth. And on the cloth are block printed images of ducks or geese. So you get a sense of what kind of colors people used of those days, what kind of decorations that they used. And we also have um, in one of those paintings, an image of um, to security guards who are wearing some kind of a stitched coat. Uh, so I hope you've learned a little bit about the Bradeshwara temple and you will go and have a look at it uh, and enjoy the beauty that Rajaraja created in the, in the time that he ruled in the 11th century.